Hello everyone, welcome back to a new video from the Footy Mates and today we're going to go over our winners and losers from the last week. Uh, to begin with, uh, today it's just going to be me, uh, shit that you couldn't make it for today's video. Uh, and uh, apologies for the delayed video, I mean it's already the weekend and we have Premier League action coming in today. But let's dive straight in and go over the last week of football. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and hit the like button to continue showing us your support uh but let's go on uh the first winner for today is cody gakbo now uh liverpool just got their 2-0 win against everton in that merseyside derby a much needed win you can say after going through a bit of a rough patch and uh it featured cody gakbo scoring his first goal for liverpool and his first goal in the premier league I mean, 23-year-old striker really showed the world what he can do at the World Cup. And a very versatile player can play at left wing, can play at strike. Uh, but keep in mind, uh, this is a player who's still very young, very inexperienced. He only has 19 career goals so far. So there's a long way to go, but I think it's a great environment for him to be in with Jurgen Klopp leading him, as well as having Salah, Nunes, Diaz and really stiff competition from that Liverpool squad. I think Liverpool could really uh, build a team here for the future if they kind of solve that midfield issue. Of course, not to mention their current season struggles, but there is no doubt that Liverpool are going to bounce back in the coming seasons. And uh, it's just wonderful for Cody Gakpo, the young player, to come and see, score his first uh, goal in the Premier League. And we're talking about a player that definitely there is potential there there's quality i mean even eric ten hag was outspoken on how much he likes cody gapo and he was the first uh, priority for manchester united when uh, over the summer as well as now in jan when uh, you given that united need a striker but only time will tell whether the 37 million pounds will become will be a good deal but yeah but let us know in the comment section what you think of this player uh, how many goals he's going to get in the rest of the season and whether this is going to be a hit transfer uh, let's move on to our first losers and this is a bit of a new one but this week I'm gonna say VAR. I mean what a shambles of a system it has been. Uh, following the Arsenal and Brentford game huge controversy uh, in that game leading to a 1-1 draw. And uh, in fact, since that game, Lee Mason, who was the VAR referee, has come out and quit the Premier League after 15 years. I mean, it's embarrassing. Uh, VAR was supposed to be this new technology that made football fair and uh, quick and not necessarily quick, but it was supposed to make football better, make football fair. I mean, we're talking about games having 29 cameras and still not being able to give a decision correctly that is blatant, that is so obvious and it's just disappointing to see that we're in the 21st century of, uh, and we're playing football with so much technology available and still we're missing out crucial offsides, crucial goals, crucial penalties not being given such as the Suchek penalty against Chelsea in the Chelsea game which resulted in Chelsea drawing to West Ham. I mean, when is this going to change? I mean, I really don't know what the solution for this is. Uh, is there supposed to be kind of a dual verification system even with VAR now? I mean, it beats the purpose, right? It's meant to be fast, it's meant to be free-flowing, it's meant to be efficient, but VAR is just the opposite at the moment and it's starting to feel like football is may actually be better without VAR given that it's taking longer to make these calls and the calls are still not right all the time. So I don't know what changes have to be made to VAR for it to be more efficient. But let me know in the comment section, do you want VAR to stay? Uh, should VAR be improved? How can it be improved? And uh, where does this go from here? Moving on to our next winners. Now, this is big. This is Wolves. Uh, talk. We're talking about them getting three wins in the last four games, including a 3-0 thrashing of Liverpool. I mean, Lopetegui has come in and really shaken up everything at that Wolves camp. Uh, we're talking about a quality manager, proven having managed Porto, Spain and uh, Sevilla in the past with a 53% win ratio. I mean, Wolves have really been challenging in the last few seasons. We've seen them even challenge for the Europa League squads just a couple of seasons ago, but they've really had a grim season this year, finding themselves in the relegation battle after the first 10 to 15 games. But 
uh, here is something interesting. In the last um, seven games since the new appointment of the manager, Wolves have actually ranked group seventh among all Premier League teams. And uh, they've really solved that key issue of not being able to score goals. I mean, we've always known Wolves as that team that have always gotten that sweaty 1-0 win or have barely been able to score goals, especially since Raul Jimenez's dip in form and that injury that he had a couple of years ago. But maybe this is something new for Wolves. I mean, they find themselves five points clear uh, of the relegation zone now. And it's fair to say that they're fairly comfortable for the foreseeable few games. And I think the fans just need to believe in Lopetegui. I mean, at the moment, this season's all about survival, but there is great potential there next summer. I heard that he was also crucial in the signings that Wolves made in January. I mean, they have a lot of young talent, uh, of quite a few misses in some of their previous transfers, but I think there are a lot of players and they're definitely a mid-table Premier League team, nowhere, supposed to be nowhere near relegation given that squad and given that manager. And maybe Lopetegui can bring this team back to its glory days just two or three years ago and um, contend for some of those top 10 spots in the coming seasons. And we're going to move on to our next losers and these are big losers. We're talking about Arsenal and they just lost 3-1 to Manchester City over the weekend. Last three games they have had zero wins. Uh, one 1-0 one no loss to Everton followed by a 1-1 one, one controversy stricken game to at Brentford and most recently losing 3-1 at the Emirates to Man City. I mean, going into this game, Arsenal were really never the favourites. They were missing Thomas Partey through injury and have been missing Gabriel Jesus for the longest time. I mean, Eddie and Ketia had three huge chances that he missed, but honestly, I feel like it's just not fair to blame him for this. He's a young player who's been given a lot of responsibility on his shoulders and he has played well in recent games, but... Arteta is just unlucky to not have Gabriel Jesus available properly since the World Cup. And we're talking about now City getting level on points with Arsenal, though Arsenal have one game in hand. Uh, the bookies in fact now have City as the favourites to win the Premier League. Uh, I mean, it really feels like uh, from here on, I mean, I have my money on City to win the league from here on, I think. Uh, Arsenal really were exceeding expectations so far, so I don't think it's fair to call the, say that they've bottled their season. I mean, fans really got hyped, so I can understand where that sentiment is coming from. But we're talking about Manchester City, a squad with so much depth, a squad with Pep Guardiola and quality of players to rule the Champions League as well as the Premier League. I mean, the only way teams now can win the Premier League and beat the likes of City is by getting 90, 95 points a season. And it's a really tough ask for teams like Arsenal. Uh, I mean, Liverpool have not been in the contest this season and Arsenal are the only close ones to kind of challenge City for that title. So we're, we're just in a period where it's, it seems like Man City are the favourites to always win the Premier League and the only way that can be stopped is by another t outsider team getting 90 to 90, 95 points. And at the moment we know United can't do that, Chelsea are going through a rebuild, they can't do that. Newcastle, I would say they at least have three or four years before they go for a proper title challenge. So. I mean, City are just in a class of their own at the moment and I do think City are going to win the Premier League. But um, I think what matters now is how Arteta go, kind of goes back into camp and leads those players coming out of these three horrific results and whether they're going to keep fighting to stay in that title challenge and it depends on how they react. I mean, I do believe Arteta has what it takes to kind of bring these players back out because young squad, they really don't have a lot of issues in the dressing room at the moment and I mean looking forward to the reaction so make sure to comment down below how you think Arsenal is going to perform here on uh, is it a clear win for clear uh, lead for City from here on or do you expect Arsenal to come back and challenge for that title till the end of the season but that has been it for today uh, I mean I'd say not the greatest quality video but uh, hey uh, we still had to go over the last uh, week of football and make sure to hit the like button if you haven't already and subscribe uh, for more content coming out I know there still has been posting the FPL leagues uh, I mean FPL picks of every week and he has been having a stellar season in FPL 
I believe he has made some great picks over the last three weeks. And uh, if you want to win that mini league with your friends, uh, make sure to stay subscribed and watch his series coming out every week. But thank you so much for tuning in. And that has been it.